Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of All About Bats. Okay, so if you're seeing this video, make sure you see part one so you get the um, beginning of the conversation. So, um, moving forward, um, the I was talking about how bad vegetable oils, the industrial oils are, okay? So, with all of your oils, you want to make sure they're cold pressed. So when you use coconut oil, you want to get extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil. Extra virgin cold pressed olive oil, okay? Now, there are different types of fats. There are saturated fats and there are unsaturated fats, all right? And with unsaturated fats, there's monounsaturated and there's polyunsaturated. Monounsaturated, okay, uh, let me see, let me explain this correctly. Okay, so fats are basically chains of carbons with hydrogens bonded to it, okay? I wish I had a diagram to draw out for you, but I'm going to explain it as best as I can. I'm sure if you Google it, the chemical structure of fats, you'll find the diagrams. But just imagine a chain of carbons, okay? And a saturated fat, every, uh, a carbon atom can bind, um, can form four bonds. Each carbon atom can form four bonds. So in a saturated fat, each carbon has is bound, has a hydrogen bound, to, you know, to it. And carbons, and there's no double bonds, it's just a single bond. An unsaturated fat means that there is double bonds in that chain. So a monounsaturated fat would mean that there's one double bond. In between two carbons, okay. And a polyunsaturated fat means that there's more than one double bond in between two carbon atoms, okay. So that's what that means. In a saturated fat, there are no double bonds at all. It's all single bonds, and it's fully saturated. Every bond that is can, every bond that can be bound is bound to hydrogen or a carbon, okay. And there's no double bonds. In saturated fats are solid at room temperature. So you have butter, shea butter, coconut oil, um, palm oil. Those are all saturated fats. And at room temperature, they're solids, and they will get um, turned to liquid as it gets warmer. Each one has a different melting point. Like coconut oil, I believe if it's hotter than 73 degrees, it will start to liquefy. If it's colder than 73 degrees, it'll be solid. Okay, shea butter takes a little bit more warmth to get to a liquid, but saturated fats are generally solid at room temperature. And the more unsaturated fat is, the more liquid it is at room temperature. So the reason why margarine, for example, margarine and the Crisco's, they told people to stop using butter, they told people to stop using lard and instead use Crisco, instead use margarine, what they did was they took polyunsaturated industrial vegetable oils, which are omega-6 pro-inflammatory vegetable oils, the highly unstable, oh, because let me explain real quick why they're unstable, because the more unsaturated a fat is, the more unstable it is. And the more unstable it is when it is, when it comes in contact with heat, light, and air, okay? Heat, light, and air. That's the reason why it's important for your oils to be cold pressed. So the only oil that you usually find in a supermarket that's cold pressed, extra virgin, is olive oil. Olive oil usually says extra virgin cold pressed and it's in a dark bottle. It should be in a dark bottle and usually it is. But if you look at this, the corn oil, the vegetable oil, the western oil, all that other stuff, um, the sunflower oil, it's in a clear bottle, right? Now, I just said that polyunsaturated fats, or unsaturated fats in general, but polyunsaturated fats even more so, because the more unsaturated fat is, the more unstable it is. So those unsaturated fats are very unstable and, and, and can get damaged very easily when it's exposed to light. So now they're in a clear bottle and light is penetrating the bottle, while well, it's in the supermarket, and all these days, light is penetrating the bottle. Then it was an expeller pressed oil, meaning they use heat to press it. So I also told you that the more unsaturated fat is, the more unstable it is when it comes in contact with heat. So they use heat to press the oil and refine it. When they refine it, they remove the vitamin E. The vitamin E is the antioxidant 
that helps prevent the fat from becoming oxidized, okay? So the antioxidant is removed, so the fat becomes even more susceptible to oxidation. Heat was used, there goes more oxidation and destruction. Then it's in a clear bottle, the light is penetrating through it, so it's even more destructive. And then people open it and expose it to air, which I said it's sensitive to heat, light, and air. And then they cook with it, so more heat, more air, bad news, okay? And there are a lot of people, you know, probably since like the 1920s is when they started really trying to push like Crisco or um, different vegetable shortenings or whatever. Um, and as that starts to increase, you start seeing heart attacks, okay? Now, it's not cholesterol because all of the studies show that actually having low cholesterol is a very dangerous thing, okay? Having low cholesterol is a very dangerous thing. There's a book, um, there's a few people you should look at, but there's also a book called Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, okay? And it's by a man named Udo Erasmus, and his first name is spelled U-D-O, and his last name, Erasmus, is E-R-A-S-M-U-S, Ph.D. Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, okay? Very, very good book about the chemistry of fats and cholesterol, okay? Um, another one is the cholesterol myth. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. And also, Dr. Majid Ali, who, he's in New York City. He has a radio show on WBAI 99.5 FM. His website is MajidAli.com. M-A-J-I-D-A-L-I.com. M A jidali.com and he speaks a lot about the dangers of low cholesterol okay as well um, but studies show that people with low cholesterol that's under like the 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 10% the of the population um, the, the, the lower 10% that are supposed to be in this great place you know um, actually die more frequently of all causes so all different things they die more frequently okay um, in cultures that eat very high cholesterol foods, which is most of the world, okay? Most of the world, you know, you go throughout Asia, there's lots of beef and pork and, you know, all kinds of organ meats. I mean, all different types of meats and stuff. Same thing with Europe, where they're cooking with duck fat and goose fat and lard and butter. Um, same thing throughout Africa, you know. Um, and People, in, when looked at, when indigenous populations are looked at who eat their traditional foods, they were very high in cholesterol saturated fats, animal fats. They did not have high cholesterol, they did not have heart attacks, they did not have diabetes or hypertension, okay? The um, epidemiological data clearly shows, clearly demonstrates that when these artificial industrial fats became introduced, that's the people, and they start telling people, to stay away from animal fats and low fat, low fat, low fat, no fat, you know, people became fatter and people's cancer increased, heart problems increased, diabetes, okay, all right, so it's, it's, it's the sugar, it's the flour in the industrial rancid vegetable oils, okay. All of the oil should be cold pressed. Olive oil is great, but it should be cold pressed, extra virgin in a dark bottle, okay. And you don't want to cook with polyunsaturated fats. Flaxseed oil is a great fat, but it's, it can, it can, it's, it's very sensitive. It can go bad very easily. So flaxseed oil needs to be kept in the refrigerator in a dark bottle. It should be cold pressed, and you only want to take it out, you know, if you're going to put it on a salad or something and eat it immediately, okay? Um, so, and olive oil is not a great oil to cook with. It's okay to cook with because it's monounsaturated mostly. It's not polyunsaturated, but it's still not as good as saturated fats. Saturated fats are the best fats to cook with, so that's butter, especially pasture butter, um, butter from grass-fed cows, okay, because um, that butter is very high in vitamin A and vitamin D, very high in CLA fats, which help us burn fat, which help us build muscle, and which help um, strengthen our immune system. Look that up, do your own research, CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, okay. It's also high in omega-3 fats and beta-carotene, um, very, very um, good quality um, uh, calcium and 
um, bacteria if it's a raw butter, okay? So, um, so yeah, so you, oh, and also, um, extra virgin coconut oil and palm oil, um, is, and shea butter, I don't eat, I've never eaten shea butter, I've never cooked with shea butter, but shea butter is edible, okay? And I always say, if it can't be on your skin, it shouldn't be in your mouth. So, coconut oil is good for your skin, and coconut oil is good to eat, okay? Now, again, but you always want to make sure they're cold pressed. So you need to read your, your foods you eat, because a lot of snack foods, um, protein bars, which are really crap, um, cereals, the soy milks and all that, you look at it and it has expelled pressed soybean oil, expelled pressed canola oil, expelled pressed sunflower oil, okay? So you really need to be careful about that because that is really what's causing the problem. Cholesterol is not good or bad, okay? Actually, overall, it's a good thing, but the cholesterol it does in your body is it helps to repair damage. Cholesterol also helps to, um, for your body to make vitamin D. When the sun hits your skin, the, in order for, for vitamin D to be formed, it has to hit cholesterol. It's a chemical reaction with the ultraviolet radiation, and that's why you don't want to wear sunscreen because that blocks your body's ability to absorb the EV rays to make that chemical process to produce vitamin D, but cholesterol is necessary. So if you don't have cholesterol in your diet and your cholesterol levels are very low, it messes with your ability to make vitamin D and other hormones, okay? And um, cholesterol is not a fat. It's like an alcohol, okay? Its chemical class is alcohol. That's why it ends with all, cholesterol raw, okay? Um, and it helps to repair damage. So when there's damage, if you have any kind of issue, if you get surgery, if you get surgery in your foot, um, whatever kind of damage that could happen in somebody's body, their cholesterol levels go higher during that time because cholesterol helps to repair damage. That's what cholesterol's function is. So it's not good to take drugs to block cholesterol production. Um, it's not good to try to avoid consuming cholesterol because um, you, when, the, when cholesterol is going to repair damage, it's usually that's the cholesterol your body makes. Your, your body, your liver makes cholesterol. But then dietary cholesterol is a cholesterol that's used more for your hormones and, and, and vitamin D production, okay? So cholesterol is very, very important, and it has antioxidant properties, okay? It's, uh, it's a free radical scavenger. Free radicals are what cause um, oxidation, okay? Free radicals, and they bind to antioxidants. Antioxidants bind free radicals. Free radicals are very unstable molecules that um, are looking to bind an electron, and so doing that, they cause damage to everything they come in contact with. Trying to become more balanced, they create off balance, okay? So that's what free radicals are, and antioxidants help to counteract that, and the cholesterol is an antioxidant, okay? Um, also, in terms of body fat, now, um, what makes people, you know, get fat is eating too much sugar, eating too much wheat and flour, people eating like, you know, wheat breakfast cereal, and eating donuts and pastries and crackers and, uh, you know, sandwiches, bread, you know, bread, 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 and wheat, bad news, okay? The sugar, the fruit juices, uh, soda is, I, when I see people drinking soda, I can't even believe that people still drink soda. Like, soda <laughs> is like probably the worst thing, you, no, it's not the worst, but it's, it's one of the worst things um, that you could possibly put, consume, okay? Um, you know what, why don't you try bathing in soda and see what it makes, what it does to your skin. Because, as I said, if you can't put it on your skin, it shouldn't be in your mouth. Like, raw milk is great for the skin. People have bathed, women have bathed in raw milk from the ancient times of Egypt to, um, you know, everywhere in the world. Women have bathed in milk. Milk is very good for our skin. Milk is also very good for our digestive tract. Okay, same thing with honey. Same thing with eggs. Eggs are very nutritious to consume, and women use eggs in their face and in their hair for to keep their skin and their hair strong, okay? But soda, no, all right? Try washing your face and washing your body in soda. Soda is just bad news across the board, okay? You want to destroy yourself? Drink soda. Now, um, then, you know, so the other thing, too, is once you... The more fat cells one accumulates, it's kind of debatable whether or not fat cells ever go away. 
You know, um, for a long time it was accepted in science that fat cells are permanent. So once somebody got really fat, if they lose weight, the fat cells shrink, but the fat cells don't actually go away or disappear, which means that if that person slips up and doesn't stay on their game, then they can get fat again very easily, okay? But I've, I've seen some recent studies that suggest that that may not be true, that fat cells, um, there may be lipolysis, which is, you know, breaking the fat cells, um, that that could be um, something that happens, all right? Now, um, but, but what we do know is that the body is always working to achieve homeostasis, okay, a point of balance. So the longer somebody is fat, okay, the longer you have body fat on your body and the more you accumulate it, the more your body is used to being that way and will be resistant to letting go of it, okay. And the answer is never to go on some restricted diet where somebody's telling you to eat two cups of broccoli and four ounces of chicken and da da da, you know, or, you know, taking diet pills. Um, just getting on the treadmill and like buying all these fitness gadgets that you don't even use. So like, people buy stuff um, and they think that, you know, like just buying it is going to make them have this great body, but they don't want to do the work. And uh, 